Good evening, everybody. Uh, Tim Mock here with the Department of Natural Resources. Um, we'll give it just another second here to let folks uh, join in and get their uh, audio visual correct. So uh, we'll uh, begin in about 60 seconds. Okay, uh, I've got five after uh, 6 p.m. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and call the order the June 20th uh, meeting of the Colorado Geographic Naming Advisory Board. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Mock with the Department of Natural Resources and I appreciate all those taking uh, the time to join us this evening. Uh, with that, we'll um, <clears throat> begin with a uh, roll call. Uh, Director Morgan. I see Director Morgan is there, uh, so we'll mark him. There you are. <laughs> Sorry, some technical difficulties. Yes, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, Mr. Benitez. I do not see Mr. Benitez yet. Uh, Dr. Ishiwada, did I pronounce that correctly? Correct, yep, thank you. Making sure, great, good to see you. Uh, Director Gonzalez, or Dr. Gonzalez. Present, thanks. Okay, uh, Dr. Wei informed us that he might not be able to make it. I don't see him right now. Uh, Senator uh, Will, do not see Senator Will. Uh, Representative Morrow, do not see Representative Morrow. Uh, Senator Exum. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Commissioner Chimino. Present. Good to see you. Uh, and Mayor Stout. Present. And Director Redhorse. Good evening, present. Evening. Um, let's see here. Uh, Tim Mock is present. Uh, Director Garcia uh, may be absent. I do not see him. Uh, Director Wolf. Do not see Director Wolf. Okay, so that shows that uh, we've got. Uh, eight board members present. That's enough for a quorum to uh, conduct business. It does not uh, meet the two thirds uh, super majority that we need to go into executive sessions. So uh, we do have an executive session item scheduled. We will uh, kind of pay attention to see if anybody else joins us in the meantime. Um, with that, on to agenda item three to review and approve the June agenda. Uh, the June agenda is was in the packet. Uh, if there are no edits uh, or corrections, I will uh, accept a motion to approve. Uh, I have a quick question. In the chat, we have a slightly updated agenda. So I, I would move to adopt the agenda as presented in the chat. Mayor Stout, very astute. And so thank you. Yes, back to this. We do have uh, an updated agenda. Uh, Johnny, if you could also post that for uh, our viewers once more, that would be great. Uh, we've added an agenda item uh, 6A, appointment of board officers. Uh, so I've got a motion to approve the agenda. Um, with that, I'm sorry, so we're on the item number three to, uh, to approve the updated agenda. Uh, any further discussion? Is there a second? Second, this is Rich Chimino. Great, we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 
Those right. opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, next we've gone to agenda item four uh, to review and approve the April summary. April summary was also in your packet there. If uh, there's no edits or corrections, uh, I'll accept a motion. I just had one question. Um, I don't, I'm listed in there. I don't believe I had yet been appointed. Um, and, and it may be that I had been and I just hadn't been notified yet, but I, I'm not sure that I was officially a board member or a director at the time that the April meeting took place. Yeah, good good point there, um, Mayor. And we, we did show that you were appointed uh, by that meeting, um, but that's no problem. Uh, we've got the meeting a summary there. Uh, so just uh, we'll, we'll just make note of that, but uh, apologies if there was any uh, communication challenges on our end. Is there a motion to approve? This is Rich, I move to approve the April summary. We've got a motion to approve, is there a second? A second it. A motion and a second, uh, any further discussion? I, I do have just discussion. I'm not, I will abstain from this vote simply because I didn't participate in the meeting and can't um, attest to the accuracy of the summary. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify signal by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, on to agenda item five, board member updates or announcements. I have one. Uh, the Department of Natural Resources uh, has hired a tribal liaison. Uh, it is Stacy Coleman. Stacy will begin uh, service with us on June 30th. And so at our next meeting, uh, she will be joining us uh, to uh, assist in staffing this board. I think that'll be uh, provide a great deal of bandwidth. Um, Ms. Coleman uh, formerly worked for the US Department of Justice uh, as an a senior counsel in the Environmental and Natural, Natural Resources Division in the Environmental Enforcement Section. And uh, she has uh, experience um, working as a tribal liaison or tribal coordinator for uh, the Department of Justice in the environmental enforcement section. So uh, that's my update uh, this month. Um, are there any other board members with any updates or announcements? Okay, seeing none, we will uh, close agenda item five and uh, move on to agenda item 6A, appointment of board officers. Our uh, bylaws um, stipulate that after serving for uh, two years as chair, uh, as the initial chair, uh, that the current vice chair, who is Dr. Nikki Gonzalez, um, will assume the chair position. Uh, and so with that, I will hand the gavel over to uh, 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 Dr. Gonzalez. And uh, the, the, the gavel is yours. And uh, thank you very much for stepping up in this role and, and really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. And thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, I ask my first time doing this, so a little, a little grace um, would be appreciated if I make some mistakes. Um, but our first order of business then is part of agenda item 6A, which is to um, select a vice chair. So I would like to know if there's any interest among the board members here for uh, with being vice chair. Anyone have the inclination? Dr. Gonzalez, can you speak to the responsibilities and the um, time commitment for the vice chair? Sure. So the vice chair would just take over um, if the, the chair is, is unable to perform their duties. But speaking as a former vice chair, um, I, I just learned. I, I just kind of watched Tim in action, and I really had very little other than regular attendance at the meetings. I had very little extra duty to perform. Are there um, executive meetings in advance of these meetings or anything additional like that? Mm, yeah, go I'm ahead. Not sure, 
Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, as, as I was chair, um, we, we didn't have uh, executive meetings uh, necessarily, but going forward uh, and with uh, some staff bandwidth coming on board, that is our intention is to um, work with the chairs uh, and include the vice chair and have some conversations leading up to the meetings on uh, the proposed agenda and uh, what to expect uh, from the business uh, of the, uh, the the board meeting. Does that answer your question, Mayor Stout? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Sure. So with that said, is would anyone be interested in stepping up to be vice chair? <laughs> I mean, I... I don't know that I am qualified as this is my first board meeting that said, if there's nobody else willing to do it, I would step into it. Um, but I would certainly um, happily step aside if anybody is, is willing to step in. Um, real quick, this is Rich and uh, Mayor Stout, I, I appreciate that. I think uh, the, the nonverbal uh, room indicates that there's not great eagerness and this one someone wants to speak up. And so, yeah, I think if you have some interest, that might be the highest level of, of the group. Um, and yeah, it's, um, yeah, my observation, uh, several years on this board, um, you're running, running the meetings, you'll, you'll run the meetings next year, you know, or, or in two, two years, perhaps. So you're kind of stepping up to that. And, um, um, Tim has done a great job, by the way, Tim, I just want to thank you. Um, seriously, Tim, this has been a great start. You really, you, we had nothing and you started us off. So thank you. But no, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was very reluctantly about to do do the same thing if no one else wanted it. But boy, you 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 beat me to it, and I'm glad you did. Um, I hope that you will continue um, putting your name in the hat, and I think we all support you. Uh, Commissioner Chimino, is that a motion? I move to appoint uh, Mayor Stout as the Geographic Deeming Advisory Board Vice Chair. Would anyone like to second that? I'll second it, Senator Exum. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Discussion? And um, before uh, we go, Madam Chair, if I might, uh, our bylaws actually, so going forward now, we had the, the chair serve in uh, for two years in the current position, and then going forward, uh, the vice chair moves in after one year. So it would be uh, at our June uh, 2024 meeting or thereabouts where we would have uh, the, the, the transfer. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please indicate, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations, Mayor Stout. You are the vice chair. And I'm also happy to, to talk with you before each meeting and kind of brief, you know, and then following maybe debrief. So whatever you're comfortable with. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so thank you for that. And that brings us to agenda item six. Six, is it 6B on the revised agenda? Um, uh, it would just be uh, agenda item six. Six, okay. And that is for the review and consideration of USB GN cases 5153 and 5038, which are Redskin Mountain to Mount Jerome and the renaming of proposed rename of Redskin Creek to Ute Creek. And Tim, did you have some background that you wanted to give us? Yeah, and, and thankfully, uh, thanks to uh, Ms. Abad uh, for putting together the packet. Most of my update is actually contained within there. You'll see on page um, nine uh, in blue, kind of the, the updates as we uh, went along with this. Um, so just to uh, refresh everybody's memory here, uh, this was a proposal uh, submitted by um, uh, Sarah Chandler or Sarah Weed. Uh, I don't see her on today. Uh, the board um, discussed this and uh, was not necessarily comfortable with um, uh, the new proposed name of Mount Jerome and uh, decided that it was our 
a desire to reach out to uh, the, the, the tribes to see if they had any feedback regarding this matter. Um, the proponent, um, Ms. Uh, Reed, was supportive of a substitute proposal uh, and was interested in uh, uh, supporting whatever the tribes uh, might come up with. Uh, there was a, a second proposal uh, submitted um, from uh, uh, Ms. Myers uh, for Mount uh, Chapita. And I'm looking now at maybe uh, Director Redhorse in case I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong. Uh, but that was, uh, that proposal was withdrawn and we were informed by that withdrawal uh, last January, 2022. Um, so we, we've had some engagement with uh, the tribes, uh, <clears throat> most notably um, during uh, Director Red Horse's um, meetings, I believe. And um, there is interest uh, from um, uh, those tribes that uh, this might, that they would support uh, the youth. They might be on the wrong one there, but we're looking for uh, perhaps working with the uh, Ute Mountain Ute and Southern Ute to uh, get their input on this. And I'm not sure that we've had any uh, new information uh, since then. Um, so I'm reading this here. There had been some meetings, actually, yes, I am correct. The tribal representatives, this was uh, last August uh, 2022, uh, tribal representatives from the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of uh, Oklahoma. They shared the knowledge and education around the process they go through. Uh, they will support recommendations that specifically come from the Southern Ute tribe and the Ute Mountain Ute tribe. Uh, and they would do some outreach uh, as well to see if they can get a proposal to bring to the board. Uh, so that's where this stands right now. Uh, Director Redhorse, maybe I should put you on the spot if you don't mind. Uh, should we continue to work with the tribes through uh, the Colorado Commission on Indian Affairs, or should we put together a uh, subcommittee to uh, discuss this matter and uh, reach out to uh, the tribes? Do you have a recommendation there? Thank you, Director Motkin. First, uh, just congratulations uh, for all of your work as chair for this um, board and congratulations, uh, Director Gonzalez on the new chair. I wonder, um, because we have not received any feedback and I know this is a proposal that has been, um, goodness, we have been reviewing for quite some time, um, but I wonder if the new DNR tribal liaison and her new position may help with the tribal outreach on this. I know our staff has been, um, have done some outreach and we um, just keep getting the same kind of answer, but if we don't, if, but I wonder if we partner with a new um, tribal liaison from DNR and then set a deadline um, to make a vote um, since we have like a, um, as we all know, have been reviewing this proposal for quite some time. Uh, I think that's a fine idea and I'm happy to uh, work with our new tribal liaison, uh, Ms. Coleman, when she gets on board here. Uh, um, I guess, uh, Madam Chair, if I could ask you to see if there's any other um, uh, discussion or concern or if uh, there's support with uh, proceeding with that matter and um, to try and put a deadline on this working with uh, the tribes and see if, uh, we need to, to move on. Sure. <clears throat> so would it would anyone like to make a motion to go forward with um, Director Red Horse's recommendation to work with the tribal liaison? Uh, if it's all right, Madam Chair, this is Rich Chimino. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez, I, I guess I'd look to legal counsel, but I think this could be just uh, direction. I don't know if we need to vote on this matter. We could vote, um, but it could be just direction to staff to, to come back. But it's whatever the chair prefers, quite frankly. So I guess, anyway, it's just uh, I offer that advice. No, I appreciate that advice. Um, legal counsel. Thank you, Chair Gonzalez and Commissioner Tomino. I agree with um, Commissioner Tomino. I don't think we need a formal uh, vote on this. That could just be direction to staff for how to to keep moving this one forward. Okay. Then um, I, I think that sounds like really good advice. To, to work with the tribal liaison, and we'll we'll take that as advice and and not a formal, um, not a formal, not not needing a formal motion. 
Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you, um, Rich Tomino again. So um, yeah, I wonder if, if Tim or, or any of the board members, I don't remember the hesitation on Mount Jerome. I think it's fine to do a pause and to seek uh, inputs. Um, I tried to look at the notes. It appeared a vote was taken by Jefferson County Commissioners in 2019. Uh -huh. And so I guess, is the current location of this mountain in Jefferson County? That, that would be the case, I think. And um, I just wonder if if, um, if there's, you know, we'll, we'll have the new tribal liaison or work with the work with the different tribes and and seek a new proposal. But if if delays continue or if there's no real consensus around a new proposal, uh, my question is, is it potential that this board might come back to the original proposal or did that hesitation? I forget what the hesitation was. Is Jerome off the table for good or might we? Might we end up back there? Is my question. Um, so, yeah, yeah. very poorly. Do you understand my question? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I might, uh, uh, Commissioner. Um, so the proposed name would commemorate uh, Irene Jerome Hood, an artist and ph photographer who lived in uh, a nearby community of Buffalo Creek. She published at least six books of her artwork under her maiden name, her watercolors. Uh, photographs highlighted geographic features and wildflowers of Colorado. This is all on page 12 of your packet there. So I think, um, you know, we can work with the uh, tribal liaison, we'll set a date, and I think that would be the, the first line of consideration then is to come back to the original proposal for Mount Jerome. Thank you very much. I, I apologize for not re reading enough detail on this in the, our packet. 144 pages is good stuff though. Um, so like, I do remember now, I think you totally triggered my memory. I think our hesitation was the practice of naming geographic features, especially mountains after people. That was that, if I recall, was the big hesitation. So, well, anyway, we can continue this direction. I'm sorry to take so much time on this. I look forward to seeing if there's some new recommendations. And I, I think that summarizes it. We, we hesitated as a board to go to another person's name um that's what i think happened anyway um madam chair thank you for the discussion appreciate the chance to discuss that oh sure and i have an additional comment so i just found my notes on that and there was um some conversation about how the name jerome erases the native history and there was a belief that names should align with the restoration efforts that are underway and it would be a missed educational opportunity so that's what i have but that was a long time ago that was nearly two years ago that we first talked about that. So, so I appreciate the conversation, the discussion. Thank you. And so, um, Tim, did you have any update on the Redskin Creek to Ute Creek? Yeah, so um, again, let's see here. We are now on page uh, 33 and 34 of the board packet. Uh, again, we had some uh, conversation about this one. Um, and uh, I'll be honest here. So we, we uh, again had some subcommittee uh, hearings or meetings with uh, the tribes and interested parties, uh, particularly the Cheyenne Arapaho tribes of uh, Oklahoma. Again, I think working with uh, Director Red Horse, and uh, again they will support the rec recommendations that specifically come from uh, the Southern Ute and the Ute Mountain uh, tribes here. Um, this. Uh, was uh, this is in Jefferson and Park counties. Um, and uh, similarly, we'd like to get uh, tribal uh, tribal feedback uh, on this matter as well. It was also, I think, uh, approved by the county commissioners back in 2019. And again, we should do some outreach to them uh, as well as uh, the previous proposal uh, to the degree that we might be uh, uh, altering uh, the proposal from what they've already uh, approved here. Um, and so again, I think um, uh, this is one, and, and Director Redhorse, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can also maybe assign this to our tribal liaison to uh, uh, perform the outreach uh, on this as well, uh, particularly with it being in the same uh, adjacent county, counties and adjacent counties. Yes, Director Mock, I um, agree with that recommendation. And I um, I think just having a timeline so we can share with the tribes of 
if we need to see or hear recommendations from them either by the next board meeting or the one after that. So we have a time frame, uh, I guess a solidified time frame to work off of um, would also be my other recommendation. That sounds good. So we'll proceed um, in a similar fashion as the previous um, geographical location and work with the tribal liaison. So thank you very much for your input. Um, I think we're ready to, oh, go ahead. I might real quick, I just wanna identify, I think uh, Director Wolf uh, joined the meeting. Uh, Director Wolf, was that you that I saw? Yes, it was, Tim. Thanks uh, for uh, seeing me join the meeting. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late. No problems, I appreciate you joining. And um, uh, I was just looking to see if we had anybody else, but uh, that's all we've got. Okay, thank you, sorry about that. That's great, thank you. And so we'll move on to agenda item number seven, which is the review and consideration of USBGN case 5557, which is Negro Creek Draw and proposed renaming to Robeson Draw. And you can find that on pages 68 to 83 of our packet. And Tim, I don't know if you wanted to also summarize some of the updates. Um, yeah, actually, so when this was proposed, there was um, in the write-up on page 53 there, uh, where there was some concern that, um, so the proposal is to rename this um, to, uh, uh, in the write-up, a reference to Robinson's Ranch, which was located at the mouth of the valley and was depicted on the USGS topographic maps in 1897. Uh, the ranch is believed to have been owned by James F. Robinson, uh, who uh, homesteaded 160 acres in 1889. Uh, according to some online ge genealogy uh, records, uh, some of which spelled his name as uh, Robis Son. R O B I S O N. Um, and so we uh, had uh, introduced this on uh, last August uh, uh, 2022, and uh, Dr. Way and Dr. Gonzalez uh, uh, raised their hands, expressing to do some additional outreach. And then, Dr. Gonzalez, I think um, what was found out from the note on page 54 that uh, the research um, and working with a, a historian, Julie Peterson, concluded that it should be spelled Robison. Um, and I wasn't sure if you had any further updates uh, on that one either. No, I don't. That's that's all I had. Okay. Uh, what we don't have right now is, uh, from what I can tell, is a letter of support from uh, the county commissioners. So. That would be one level of, of uh, outreach that we would want to do. I know that, um, actually, I believe uh, uh, Ms. Abad had sent an email, and I'm now scrolling through my pages here, um, looking for that, had sent an email to the Montezuma County Commissioners, uh, and we have not had a response on that. So some additional outreach to the Montezuma County uh, would probably be appropriate. The other question I'm, I'm not sure was answered that I saw in the packet is whether or not there was, we've had the ability to confirm Mr. Robison's race at any point. Yeah, in my understanding is that there, we have not been able to uh, confirm uh, that and you're right, that's, uh, that was expressed as uh, a level of interest. That's correct. We, we did not confirm that in our research. Any other discussion, questions? Uh, so good afternoon. I'm a new member. This is my second meeting, but I'm, I'm just curious how this discussion lines up with what we just heard about consider extra consideration going towards naming after individuals which I, I was not part of that conversation. So I don't know that we've ever, in, in Commissioner Chimino, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if we've ever completely resolved this. We have named some things after some individuals uh, and gone along with that. Not many. I think that it's something that we all would agree we, we, we don't take lightly. 
uh, necessarily. Uh, and then the USB GN does have some criteria and that criteria is in our um, process document uh, that uh, if it, uh, it can't be somebody alive, uh, they must be passed for, I think it's five years. We've got Ms. Runyon can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, so there's nothing hard and fast necessarily, but uh, and unless something really kind of pops in, in their background, I think. Uh, Commissioner, am I characterizing that correctly? Yes, Tim, I would agree. I don't really have anything to add, but I'll just reiterate. It's not, we're not um, choosing to never name things after people at this time. We're still open to it. We've done it a few times. It's just, I would characterize it as a reluctance, as a caution, um, not a hard and fast no. So I hope that helps clear, clear it up. Thanks for the question though, Eric. That was a good question. And Dr. Ishiwada, I think in this case, we wanted to learn a little bit more about who this person was um, before we made that determination. Um, Ms. Runyon, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you everyone for allowing me to join and, and uh, a couple of new folks perhaps. Um, I'm on the research staff of the US Board on Geographic Names and I'm always thrilled to be invited to attend these meetings and observe and maybe occasionally weigh in with a comment or two. Um, and so I just wanted to note on this particular one that the name that's been proposed is Robinson Draw, which means technically that's the only name that can be considered. Um, if it is to be amended to Robeson Draw, that would technically be a new proposal. Um, I don't recall, um, I, I remember last year when this first came up for discussion and, and um, whether the original proponent was asked if she was willing to amend her proposal to Robeson um, because only she as the proponent can withdraw or amend her proposal. Um, I realize it's a minor difference. We probably could make the change, but it would require technically a new case brief and a new BGN review list notice because it is a change of proposal. Um, and you're right, we had not heard from the county. Now, we, there was some back and forth with the Forest Service. Again, it's been a couple of years, I believe now, and they are on record as supporting Robinson. So again, if the proposal is amended to Robeson, then that would be, um, we need a new recommendation from the Forest Service and Jesse Nett representing region two, I know is in this meeting today. Um, and um, my notes, I, I, we did the same genealogy research, I think that you all had done. Um, and it appears from the research we could find that Robeson is a white individual, um, but it's not clear. Um, Robinson Ranch was named for James Robinson who homesteaded at the mouth of the uh, the valley, I believe. Um, and I believe he was a black individual, but clearly some more research needs to be done. And I believe History Colorado had offered to do some more investigation to nail down the identity of this individual. Um, so if that can be done, that would certainly, I think, be very helpful. So um, I, I hope that helps. But again, bottom line is you all technically need to be voting on Robinson Draw. Now the Colorado board itself could be the counter proponent of a change to Robeson, if that's your preference. But that'll be a new proposal starting over from the beginning. My opinion is that before we go down that route, we finish the research on, on who the Ro Robeson or Robinson, <laughs> or what ends up being accurate, really just who the individual was, because it may be a moot point if, um, depending on what information we get back. Thank you for all of that information, Ms. Runyon and Mayor, sure. thank you. Um, and we did in our initial um, research with History Colorado, I mean, Julie, I think it was Julie Peterson determined that it was Robeson, the individual we were talking about was Robeson, but there was still a lot of fuzziness ar around who who it was and, and his race and so forth. So I think I think it would be prudent for us to go back and do some additional research. And before we yeah, I'd like to think there might be some records about the Robinson Ranch because that's labeled on the USGS topographic map at that location. So um, 
you think that if it was a ranch, there'd be some documentation somewhere about the owner or family or um, so maybe another month's deferral perhaps. I think that I think that's prudent. And I think we can contact probably some historical society in in that county to do to help us with some of that research and not just try to do it all from Denver. Right. So I'd like to then push that off until until next month when we have a little bit more information. And so okay, so I guess um Tim, do we do, oh, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, actually, if I might, and I forgot this during the board updates, and while we've got Jenny Runyon uh, with us, Ms. Runyon, um, could you just give us a quick update uh, on Mount Evans? I think there's an interest in that. I was afraid you were going to ask. Um, I don't have a whole lot to report, uh, Mr. Mock. <laughs> um, the uh, tribal consultation is ongoing. Um, as you recall, it was on our March 9th agenda for a vote. And the evening before, we received a request for uh, deferral, um, or I should say request for tribal consultation from the Northern Cheyenne tribe. That was honored. Uh, the Department of the Interior um, arranged a tribal consultation session. Um, it's still ongoing, still getting uh, feedback from the um, various tribes with an interest in the area. Um, we have canceled our July meeting so the next opportunity, if all goes well, and the consultation can be you know, wrapped up, it would be on our August 10th agenda for fingers crossed the final vote. That's really all I know. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Sure. And before we move on to the next agenda item, would anyone like to join the little work group, the little research group around Robeson, Robinson draw? Um, it would be joining me and Dr. Wei in that. And if not, we can totally handle it. So. And the chair, is that, um, uh, yeah, I think you, Dr. Wei, can totally handle it. Um, does it involve Zoom meetings or physical travel? Like, what's the involvement? We've, so far, we've been able to do all of our research via Zoom. So. Yeah, it, you broke up a little bit, um, Commissioner Chimino, but I think I caught most of what you were saying. Um, yeah, you've always been able to do it. So. I'm sorry? Okay. Yeah, I apologize for interrupting you there. I think my screen froze. So yeah, I think um, um, I'd be happy to uh, be invited to um, this, this committee. And I, I haven't done one yet, so I look forward to seeing what it's like to do more detailed research at a committee level for, for this board. So. I'd appreciate that opportunity. Uh, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. We will, Dr. Wei and I will be in, in contact with you then. Okay. So moving on to agenda item eight, which is the review and consideration of USBGN case 5758, um, Chinaman Canyon to the proposed name Toysen Canyon. Um, we we have Tim. Would you like to give your update first, or we can call on? I don't know if Peggy Lore is is on the call actually. Peggy oh, yes, is. She is. Okay, great. Um, um, yeah, I'll I'll go just real quick here. Um, this was a uh, proposal that we introduced uh, uh, in August, uh, and then as you all know, we didn't have. Uh, much more follow up uh, towards the end of the year, given uh, our, our, our workload. Um, and there was some interest in terms of uh, the correct spelling. D Dr. Wade did reach out to the proponent, uh, uh, Ms. Lohr, uh, to see if uh, Toisen, uh, T O I S A N, is the spelling, is the correct spelling. And uh, then uh, Ms. Lohr did join us at our October uh, meeting. Um, and uh, discussed uh, the, 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 the offensiveness of the current term and the reason Toysen was chosen as preferred renaming is that uh, prior to World War II, 50% of Chinese who were in the United States came from a certain region of uh, China uh, and they came from the counties of, of Toysen. And so um, it kind of was a brief update that we had before we jumped into uh, the consideration of the Mount Evans proposals. 
So, uh, Madam Chair, I would invite uh, Ms. Lohr if she's got any further updates uh, regarding this matter. Great, thank you. Ms. Lohr, would you like to share any updates? Maybe she stepped away from her computer. That or Ms. Lohr, if you're, uh, you might still be on mute. We can try and catch her at the end of the next one here and see if uh, she is available. Um, I think the, the the only other updates that I would have is it's not apparent that um, that we have a feedback from the Los Animas uh, County Commissioners. Um, and again, I believe that uh, there was some outreach uh, performed by Ms. Abad on uh, August uh, 1st uh, to uh, the county commissioners and uh, we, we did not receive uh, any notice uh, back. So uh, otherwise we have not, you know, kind of gained this out in terms of how we would uh, proceed uh, regarding this uh, further consideration of this matter. Okay. All right, thank you. So Ms. Lohr, are you, do you happen to be at your computer? Okay. Well, um, we'll go ahead and, and move on to, before we complete that agenda item, we'll go ahead and, and move on to the next agenda item and maybe give um, Ms. Lohr a chance to come back and, and share some updates. So agenda item nine is the review and consideration of USBGN case 5765, which is the re renaming or recommendation to rename Dead Mexican Gulch to Jose Ballarde Gulch. And um, this can be found on pages, let's see, pages 80, no. 84 to 134 of your packets. And Tim, I would just invite you for any updates, please. Yeah, similarly, this was a bit complicated here as there uh, were questions about the variation of uh, the name uh, and the spelling of the name uh, to which it's being recommended to uh, 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 be converted to. Um, and so we also had introduced this one on August uh, and uh, Dr. Way and Dr. Gonzalez uh, did a little bit of further research uh, that they had uh, first uh, looked into the spelling of uh, Bellardi or Velardi, because if you go back in the document in all of the uh, stories that are contained within the background material, um, there were some variations on, on the name and exactly who this individual might have uh, been. Um, and uh, Dr. Dr. Gonzalez, you all consulted with a linguistic professor at Regis University, Dr. Castro, who said Bellardi, uh, with a B, is, is actually a last name coming from the Basque. Uh, there is no V in Basque, only B. So she would lean towards Bellardi. Uh, Bellardi is quite possibly just a variation of, of the last name. And then um, you all again cons uh, consulted uh, Julie Peterson, uh, a historian uh, for History Colorado and read the newspaper articles and other research uh, characterized by hearsay and rumor. Um, and uh, we only kind of had a location of where this individual might have died, but also it's possible that uh, the individual committed crimes uh, that would not merit recognition with a name geographic uh, landform. So that's kind of the update. I don't believe we've had uh, the support from uh, uh, the county yet. That's that's correct. That's what I have. Is there any, is there any uh, insight into what these um, crimes might be? Because I, I think that uh, a lot of things were called crimes that I don't know that we would still consider crimes. There are also crimes of desperation. There are crimes of you know, simply existing in a state that wasn't allowed, you know, such as, um, you know, being a Mexican man, right? So I think that without further clarification, unless we were talking some real serious crimes of moral turpitude, uh, I, I don't know that that should be a, a factor. 
So. Yeah, so Mayor, there was a 1915 Route County Sentinel article uh, titled uh, Two Mexican Sheep Herders Killed in Cold Blood by a Fellow Employee, uh, Jose Ballarde. Uh, an entrusted companion's uh, paycheck squanders the proceeds and seeks to cover the theft by murder, uh, body of victim, body of one victim. Um, so there's a couple of news articles in there. The, again, in 1916, another Route County um, a sent, a Sentinel article uh, that the individual was sentenced to a penitentiary for 12 to 16 years for uh, the killing of two other Mexicans in Red Park. Um, so yeah, there's uh, looks like murders in, in, in the background. Potentially. That generally falls under the moral turpitude <laughs> area. Yeah. And I, I appreciate your comments or your questions, Mayor, because I think, you know, who knows what really happened, right? We don't know um, if he was framed. I mean, we just don't know a lot of the circumstances, especially at that time in history. So I think those are important questions. So I think there's still a lot of mystery from, from Dr. Wei and, and my research, a little mystery around who this individual was. So, um, I don't know, do, does the, do we think that we need more information that we should pursue further research on this before we, we, we it would be, um, oh, yes. go ahead. Commissioner, uh, or Commissioner Chimina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I should use the raised hand function, like Ms. Runyon is so well at doing. Um, so, yeah, you know, we want to be careful and we want to be deliberate and but, um, and yeah, back to names again, a, a person. I, I just wanted to share my perspectives as I thought through this and I really welcome fellow board members to do the same budget time or uh, agenda time allowing. Um, you know, the, the, this, this location, this feature uh, was called a, a pretty, you know, disrespectful name for many decades, but that's kind of that feature's history at this point. And those that have lived there all this time, uh, I look forward if you want to take more time to get the county's input. But um, it's sort of a bit of a correction, you know, the the individual, if I remember the briefings correctly, and I welcome correction, um, you know, a dead individual was found and and the feature was named, you know, a dead person's gulch in a, in a derogatory way all this time. And, you know, perhaps the person had a, a, um, a sorted history you know, do, do we honor them with a name? Maybe in this case, so I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I'm, I'm leaning favorable towards the recommendation because it sort of wraps up the history, wraps up the legacy that has been experienced with this feature for all this time. And maybe it's not really, you know, honoring a person for what they did necessarily, but just kind of finalizing and at least, at least recognizing people with the name, not just a derogatory term. But I can understand if folks feel differently, and if there is a historical figure or a or a kind of a, a local name that's not human related, fine. But we, you know, it, I generally lean favorably towards this recommendation at this time. But um, that that's just some thoughts on much. Thank you for those comments. Other discussion, comments. Yes, Director Mock. Madam Chair, I would uh, volunteer that uh, we can, uh, if we hadn't already, or reach back out to the Garfield County Commissioners also and uh, let them know that we're considering this and see if they have any input on uh, the matter. So I'm happy to to, to work with uh, our team here at DNR to, to do that. Okay. That sounds like a good way forward. Yes. Yeah, and I generally concur with Commissioner Chimino um, in terms of leaning towards still supporting the name change, regardless of um, alleged crimes or history. That said, if there are other reasons that we would postpone this for further outreach or research, um, I, I think it might it might be worth looking at it. I mean, the fact that there was reference to being sentenced for a murder likely means that the murder itself was worthy of coverage. So if there is something in the in the archives, um, it might be interesting to know. I don't know that it would sway my decision, but if it's something that is reasonable to research and we have 
and we have other reasons to um, to draw this out a little bit longer than I would support searching for that. Okay. Right. Um, let's go ahead then and put this off for another month and we'll continue to, if, if Director Mock, if you would reach out to the Garfield commissioners and I can revisit this with Dr. Wei. And if anyone else is interested in joining our little research group, um, we welcome you. Um, it's certainly an interesting story. And it's also kind of a window into a larger story of Mexican sheep herding in that area, which just, yes, Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you're going to add me to the Robus and Robinson, then I guess you two and I can also uh, consult on this matter too. It sounds, it's actually, well, they're both kind of the same distance from my county, but uh, I'd love to join your group if I could on this one too. You're hired. <laughs> you got the job. All right. Um, let's go ahead and go back. To, okay, so we'll proceed um, with that plan of action. And let's go back to agenda item number eight and see if Ms. Lore is able to give us an additional update. Ms. Lore, are you, are you at your computer? And willing to give us an update on Toysan Canyon? Um, just in case you're, you're muted. Okay. Well then, um, in this situation, let's go ahead and put this one off until next, next month as well. And we'll, we'll work with Ms. Lohr on providing a, any additional updates that she might have. All right. Um, so thank you all. We made it through our, our recommendations, our items. And now um, for agenda item 10, I'll hand it over to Assistant Attorney General Mercer. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, so agenda item 10 um, was good. 10 is to review the process document. Um, and then 11 would be the executive session. Um, Director Ma, or um, yeah, Director Mock, would you like to address the process document or? Would you yeah, like and actually what I have is uh, agenda item 10 is review the bylaws. Um, unless I'm from a different script here, one second. Okay, no, all right, um, now, now I'm reading from the same uh, song sheet here. Okay, uh, the process document here. Uh, so we walked through this um, last uh, last meeting and this is on uh, the last couple of pages of our uh, board packet. So uh, specifically, items, uh, pages, as I'm scrolling here, give me a second. So beginning on page uh, 135 in your document, in your packet there uh, is the uh, process document. And uh, for those that weren't able to join us uh, last meeting, uh, we worked these out uh, at the beginning of uh, the board or the creation of the board and the attorney general then and an assistant uh, reached out to some of the other states. Uh, we worked with the USBGN and kind of piled, compiled uh, some general sort of processes that we would uh, work through. A, a lot of this that you see is uh, similar to um, sort of that follows the USBGN uh, guidance. Uh, we still recommend that uh, proposals for the time being as we're working through our backlog. Um, that uh, we that proponents still submit through the USBGN and they do some initial legwork uh, before coming to us. Um, and so we kind of discussed that last meeting. We've made some minor uh, edits to this. So we never, the former uh, board over the last two years, we actually never finalized the, the approval of this document basically. Uh, and instead made it draft as we kind of test, took this for a test drive. And I think after uh, two years, uh, we're pretty close to um, essentially 
you know, generally the process that we uh, abide by as a uh, naming advisory board. Um, specifically then in our discussion last week, uh, we, we, we had a conversation that centered around um, the uh, Appendix B, and this is down on page, uh, be page 10 of the uh, process document or page 144, the very last page regarding uh, derogatory terms. And uh, Ms. Abag, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the first bullet point is, is what we had. And after some discussion, um, uh, we uh, came up with working with um, Director Red Horse had a point of clarification with the, uh, the following bullet point that's in blue for derogatory terms. And am I correct in that? Yes, that is correct, Tim. Okay, thank you. So I think that that's where as a group we, uh, we, 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 we landed on. Um, uh, and so it's when a proposed geographic name is replacing a derogatory or offensive term, if applicable, the board will consult not only with the communities towards whom the derogatory term is directed, uh, as well as the local community in which the geographic feature is located, while also thoroughly considering the local community members affiliated with the, the derogatory term uh, to attempt to find consensus on a new geographic name. And some of this came out of uh, the, the, the um, Delta County uh, renaming uh, in which the board made a recommendation, um, but the governor um, actually went with the locals uh, in terms of uh, their their proposal and supported that. And so we decided that you know we do need to actually consider and, and have some conversations with uh, the the local communities. And essentially, we have had those conversations. Uh, we. We uh, did that, worked with um, uh, the Chief County Commissioners uh, in renaming um, uh, Yansing Gulch. And in that case, we were actually able to, to, to find a level of support between those two. And I think on some of these other ones that we're considering today, uh, we'll be uh, consulting with the locals as well. And hopefully we can find some consensus in the future. Um, let me put Director Red Horse, uh, that second bullet point, does that reflect uh, your edits then? Are you comfortable with that? Yes, thank you uh, so much for the addition. Um, you know, I really, I think the first bullet point just really highlighted a more like either or, like it's the either the communities who are, um, <clears throat> um, goodness, who are the derogatory is directed or the local community. And I think we really need to work with the local community who um, the derogatory term is directed, which I think we have been doing, um, but I think that language does need to be put um, formally in the in our protocols. So with that, I would like to uh, see if there's any conversation uh, regarding this and, and it'd be nice to uh, at some point here be able to uh, approve uh, the process document uh, so that the, we can post it on the website and the public has some understanding of the process that we uh, work through here as, as they make their proposals. I, I have a, just two, I think, maybe semantic questions. Um, the first one is really just a linguistic thing and it's, it's that it should be, if it says not only, then where it says as well as, it should say but also, or we could take the not only out and leave it as well as. So that's truly just a, a semantic linguistic um, observation. But then the second part, which I think is a little bit more in in the significance, um, you know, lens, is that our I think what we're trying to say, and and I had read the. Um, the, the summary of the April discussion on this. I think what we're trying to say is that the people to whom the derogatory term is directed and the local community, those are both, you know, we wanna consult both of those, but that emphasis is given to, peop to people who meet both of those things. So local and um, derogatory term directed at. So I think that rather than having it be also thoroughly considering, because I think that implies that we're not thoroughly considering everything and, and 
we are ideally we should be um so i think rather than thoroughly considering if what we're trying to say gen you know is genuinely that we will give priority to or highest preference to or um you know, I, I think we need to just say that because the thorough consideration should be happening for every position. So it doesn't quite get to, I think, the strength of the of the recommendation here. Commissioner Chimino. Uh, thanks. Um, Mayor Stout, are you suggesting a three tiered system? Or I guess, well, kind of like equal value to, uh, I'm, I'm going to use the term aggrieved community, then local community side by side, but then the primacy is the, the locals who are also the community that derogatory term is directed to. Is that what you're suggesting? If I'm understanding, I mean, not having participated in the original discussion, yes, if that is an accurate reflection of the sentiment in, in getting to this point in the first place. I think that if we're saying that the local community is important, and we are also saying that the aggrieved community is important, then there should, I think there is an assumption that the, the overlap of those two should have extra weight uh their opinions or their their uh input should have extra weight so that is i guess what i i'm saying but if that's not what the tenor of the conversation was um i you know i guess i submit that as a current consideration yeah thank you i um i think we've been behaving that way um i think there was a, a clay um mountain and a clay creek in delta county those are the the new names now and uh yeah we took a lot of time with that i think we did what you what you suggest i think we did not find hardly any local population that was the population that derogatory term was directed at that, that live in delta county currently but yeah if we had i think we probably would have given them primacy i think your suggestion is kind of spot on how we've been behaving um is there any other feedback from other board members about this new suggestion? And I might really quickly just add a clarifier then, if that's the case, because that is complicating if we're saying like this is the priority, but it, if it doesn't exist, I think that if we say, um, you know, at the very that last clause there, um, while also while prioritizing the local community members affiliated with the derogatory term when present or when such condition you know when such members exist because that way you know if there are if there are only two people compared you know in that that, that category it may change the weight sorry i have a cat trying to put his head over the camera here it may change the weight it may not but i think just the 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 idea that were that to be the case that that is where the priority input would be considered I yeah, for what it's worth, I lean favorably towards that. Oh, go go ahead, Director Redhorse. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was going to say I should have put my hand up, so I apologize. Um, I'm still contemplating that prioritization, um, but I I don't necessarily agree with if present or that necessarily language because I think it then it leads into having that. Uh, I, you know, I think it's our responsibility to seek out those community members, and I think there's often an assumption that. Um, those community members don't live in the rural areas or around the location. And so that's why I'm a little bit hesitant in using um, the if present or if available or that kind of language um, if we were to go that down that route. And I don't mean if they're like present in the conversation, I mean if they're present in the area. So I, I mean, I think that can be wordsmithed, especially because we have legal counsel that can do that for us. But I, I mean more like if there are genuinely no members of the aggrieved community or the, the 
community, the derogatory term is directed at that live in that area and we can establish that, um, then obviously we wouldn't have that input to take into consideration. So I, I don't I don't mean to construe it as if they're present, you know, kind of at the table, but if they live in that area. I can um, share my screen if we need to. I've been making some edits based on the conversation. So let me let me see if I capture the discussion correctly here. Derogatory terms. Uh, when a proposed geographic name is replacing a derogatory or offensive term, if applicable, the board will consult with the communities toward whom the derogatory term is directed, as well as the local community in which the geographic feature is located while prioritizing input from local community members affiliated with the derogatory term to attempt to find consensus on a new geographic name. That sounds pretty close, but it's, um, sorry to jump in. Yeah, I kind of, I feel like my comments uh, clarifying Mayor Stout's suggestion um, may have sounded like I want to put words in that they're present and I don't really think that's necessary to put those words in, especially after hearing Director Red Horse's concerns. I think it's inherent that if we list them, that they, you know, they, the local population that the derogatory term is directed against take primacy in our weighing the different testimonies we get. And But if they're not there, that's just inherent that they, we wouldn't find them. And so I don't know if we really need to put that language in. And I think that might satisfy Director Red Horse's concerns. When you put that language in, then maybe it could be twisted in the future, perhaps. I'm not sure exactly what Director Redhurst's concerns were, but I didn't mean to imply we need to add language. I was just kind of vocalizing the the way I perceive your suggestion. And I think I think I like your suggestion of giving them primacy. Um, and I don't think we have to list the, you know that they have to be living there or anything additional words. I think it'll be just it'll be practiced as if we give them primacy, but we can't find them. Well, then we'll go back to the you know there's the locals overall, and then there's the Community derogatory terms directed against from from outside that that provides equal input that we weigh. Dr. Shiwada. Yeah, thank you. So you elected officials, you're in far more committees than than I am, but I always get nervous on committees. You know, it's like a double edged sword of being so vague that there's not guidance but then sometimes you can kind of paint yourself into a corner with language to where it becomes difficult to really respond to some of the nuance and one thing that has struck me in my short time in this committee is it seems like each case has very complicated and different circumstances behind it and so at this point i think i'm leaning a little bit more towards flexibility in order to be able to and then and then rely upon the discernment and judgment of the committee members to get us to the right choice rather than uh, maybe putting very definitive language in that maybe precludes different types of deliberations or considerations that in the future. So Dr. Shuada, sounds, like, sounds like you have been an elected official, with what you just said, that was, that was well said. Um, my video, language and not, not specifying that we give primacy to this, this third group that we've identified. Uh, I think it was a good suggestion from, from Mayor Stout, maybe we just have to decide as board members if we individually give them primacy or not. And this was a good discussion, and that's why hopefully uh, before we're done, I want to discuss a board retreat again, and we kind of congeal around a philosophy that we have as a group. And as new board members come on, we got to kind of spread that original philosophy and it'll evolve. But I, I like what you just mentioned. Um, so maybe we don't make any changes in the language because we'll paint ourselves in a corner too much, but I think we could still kind of practice what's discussed here. Senator Exum. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I uh, I would just uh, I, I agree with what's been said, but I uh, I think getting feedback from both of those groups is very very vital because of the historical perspective that 
each of those uh, each of those groups would uh, would or could bring. Because we, if we talk about people that that weren't present, but maybe they they shared that historic that history with uh, current family members that could could speak about uh, those derogatory terms and, and what type of impact that had. Thank you for that, Senator. Anyone else? Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I cannot find my hand fast enough to raise it. You're, you're fine, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I do um, like what was um, said by um, the professor and not necessarily being more flexible because I think then our answer comes to the board members of how we vote, right? We'll show, I guess, where we ourselves prioritize as individual board members. Um, and after processing a little bit about uh, Mayor Stout's um, recommendation where I, um, I, I agree with it to the point where um, I think it goes back to the indigenous and tribal nations, however, in that which all of the, um, the, geogra the geographic locations of Colorado can go back that they were once home of um, the tribal nations. And so that's why we do share with the prior, uh, the proposals with each of the um, tribal nations that used to call Colorado home. And I think that's why I wouldn't agree with the prioritization of local communities um, who the derogatory term is derogatory term is addressed to at some points. Um, not all the proposals, but I think that's where I don't necessarily, I don't think I would agree with the prioritization of the three areas of what we which, which we are discussing here today. Thank you, Director Redhorse. Any other comments? Um, I, I was just going to say that I think that, you know, given the, the sentiment that we're hearing, um, leaving it less restrictive in the language, so leaving it in the original point, doesn't preclude us behaving in a way that honors the second point. But if we put the second point in there, it would preclude um, the, the, you know, not doing so. So I think that the way that it's that it really accommodates everybody's intention here and opinion um, is leaving it in the original form. So, Director Mock, do we is this a point where we do a motion, or I'm I'm not really sure how to proceed. Um. Yeah, I think if if we're there, if we want to adopt this, if we want to, you know, take another kind of run at this, I, I, I think I'm a, I think if I were to follow the last word of advice, we're going with the first bullet point now, or that's kind of where this conversation is headed. Uh, I've lost a little bit of track, though, to be honest. Um, so we could we could go with 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 one or the other uh, if 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 there's a motion to, to do that uh, and then we can uh, move to approve the uh, document uh, if uh, we get there and so um, I, I want to make sure I guess check with director red horse again if 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 that first bullet point gets at what you're discussing and if anybody else and and I'm happy to also share my screen and kind of wordsmith this on the fly if we wanted to do that but uh, need some help here. Uh, I think sharing your screen would be helpful. I guess it goes back to my original concern though, is that the first bullet point has either or, right? It's either the local communities or the derogate, the communities that to which the derogatory term is addressed to. And I think there is a both there. Um, the director right horse, what if we were to do, um, In, in, in maybe legal can help me out a little bit here, but but rather than make it one whole paragraph, derogatory terms when a proposed geographic name is replacing a derogatory or offensive term, uh, we do a colon there, 
and then do a sub bullet. The board will consult with communities towards whom the derogatory term is directed, and then a, another sub bullet uh, that we will uh, consult with the local community in which the geographic feature is located. I guess before we chop anything, I read it as inclusive and not exclusive because the as well as brings both of them in. It doesn't. It doesn't give the option of either or. It it very specifically makes it inclusive of both communities. I could chime in. I, I would agree with that. I think the, the way that, that it's phrased is requiring consultation with both um, the local community and the community to, towards whom the, the derogatory term is, is directed. Um, and I, I think I, I'm hearing a desire to recognize the fact that there can be overlap there um, and I think just my opinion, and of course it's at the board's pleasure how we want to phrase this, but I think, you know, the first bullet point that doesn't include, you know, call out that overlap still certainly leaves the board discretion to, you know, have special outreach or give additional consideration to input from those groups that um, meet the overlap. Um, so I think that that can be done under either scenario. Um, if we, if the board prefers to specifically call that out, but perhaps not prioritize it, that's another sentiment that I heard, um, and I'm happy to, to screen share as well. Um, but one thought that I had for including, you know, a recognition that some folks will be in both those groups without sort of creating a, a, a priority list would be instead of saying, while also thoroughly considering or saying while prioritizing input from you could say something that's a little more more general like with with special consideration of input from local community members affiliated with the derogatory term um, something like that to me is would be less restrictive than prioritizing um, but would at least enshrine in this document the intention to give special weight to those folks. Um, just a few, a few options. And, and if we go back to the Delta County case, I, I think I kind of like that because we actually had an individual who now wasn't with, um, if, you, if, we, if you remember back then, uh, and, and I, there, uh, I don't have their name on my mind right now, but anyway, the individual uh, was from uh, Grand Junction area, I believe, and not that county and kind of criticized us for actually not working with uh, locals that fit both descriptions that uh, were local and uh, within the, 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 the uh, um, within the, uh, a group of, of, of those to which the uh, derogatory term was directed. Thank you, Director Mock. That was the exact example of what I guess led me to this discussion. So I really do appreciate all the um, conversation that we're having around this. I have a procedural or yeah, procedural clarification question then, um, Director Mock. Are we uh, the, the entirety of the bylaws need to be approved. The, the bylaws do not. The bylaws have already been passed. We're already operating on that. And we can make sure that we uh, get you a copy of those. Um, I, I have them. I, like, I don't know. I guess that's my question. Are we only approving the language in this bullet point and incorporating that into the whole document? Or does the entirety of the document need to be approved? So this is a separate document. This is the process guidance document. And all this is is guidance, uh, basically, in terms of how we proceed in consideration of proposals. And this is something that is operated as a draft document and, and we would like to get this one cleared. So we'd have the bylaws, which are already approved and then approve a, a, a process guidance document. Thank you. So the entire, we need to just approve this entire process guidance document. Um, so if we can land on language for this term or this bullet point that we like this evening, we could approve the entirety of it. And we don't need a separate motion for this bullet point since it's incorporated in the whole document. 
Yeah. So yeah, just be a, you know, if we all get a thumbs up on this, we can just swap that out and then, you know, make a motion on the uh, document itself. Um, but, you know, and again, back to that Delta County case, I mean, I think that was the, it, that was an important lesson for us is not just to consult with those to which the derogatory term, but to the degree that we can, we should be consulting with those that to which the derogatory term is directed that live in that local community. And I think that was, that, that stood out uh, very much in terms of how we proceeded from a member of the public. Director Mock or um, Assistant Attorney General Mercer, would one of you mind sharing your screen? Why don't we that have, uh, yeah, Attorney General Mercer. Um, okay, I think that would be helpful. Johnny may have to get you the right stairs working on it, I'm sure. Yes, I don't think I have that ability. Right? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. One okay, try it now. All right, it looks like I have that ability. All right, so can everyone see a, a Word document on my screen that I've copied and pasted this bullet point into? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, great. So this includes the, the linguistic edit um, from Mayor Stout of taking out not only, um, and then the suggestion that I saw in the chat from, I believe it was from Director Wolf of alternative language to use with particular attention paid to the local community members affiliated with the term. Um, but I'm happy to edit this however folks would like. That's acceptable to me. I agree as well. Um, can we get, uh, oh, just... Okay, sorry, I was just looking at the chat. Um, could we get then, Tim, Tim, would you recommend at this point, just needing a little bit of your assistance, a thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes, yeah, so let's let's do that. Um, and maybe uh, Lauren, if you could uh, discontinue sharing so we can see sure. everybody. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I think we would do is that if we could kind of get a general feel for where everybody's at, if they can live with that, a thumbs up. Um, let's go that route. Okay, I think we're just about there. Um, and then anyone would disagree with that or is there any further discussion? I don't see any disagreement. Okay, so then we'll go ahead with that wording. Thank you. Okay. So do we need a motion to adopt or to, yeah, to publish to adopt the uh, process document with the incorporating the uh, modified language as discussed just now? Good question, Assistant Attorney General. Yeah, so if, if that's the, um, I think a motion to that effect would be appropriate. Okay. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shawada. Um, any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, say no, nay. Okay, the motion passes. We'll go with that that wording. Thank you. All right. So, um, with that, then we will move to the next agenda item, which is our executive session. So, Madam Chair, uh, I don't think we're there with the the uh, two thirds majority to go into executive session. Um, we so we might have to punt this again to uh, the next meeting when we uh, do for the board training. Okay, and we'll we'll push that forward a month, and hopefully we'll have 
um, a two thirds two thirds present for that. Um, so now we open it up for public comment. Is that correct, Tim? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I might actually, um, uh, it looks like Peggy Lohr was able to come off mute. So uh, since we've got a little bit extra time, um, we might want to invite Ms. Lohr if she's available to uh, discuss uh, her proposal. Absolutely. Ms. Lohr, um, welcome. We would like to invite you to share um, some updates about your proposal, which is um, case number 5758 regarding the, re the proposed name of Toysing Canyon. The floor is yours. Audio might not be working. Or yeah, way. maybe she's having some audio problems. Um, well, we can we can push that to to next month as well. And so we'll reach out to Ms. Floor and ask her if she'll be present at our next meeting. Okay. Um, so now now we open it up to public comment. Um, Tim, you have your hand hand up. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see everyone. Uh, thanks for taking public comment. I want to say, yeah, congrats to Mr. Mock on the chair. I mean, you really kind of shepherded it through those first two years. That's pretty great. And yeah, Dr. Gonzalez, good luck. I think you got your work cut out for you. Um, <laughs> and then my last comment, or my other comment was uh, great hat, Commissioner Chimino. Uh, let's go Nuggets. Uh, we're going for number two. And then I uh, just want to say thanks very much for all the kind of work on the Mount Evans name change and like the support for Mount Blue Sky. Uh, was super huge and everyone's work on it to get it kind of passed in December, I think was so big. So just want to say massive shout out to try to get that uh, that through. Um, and yeah, let me know if you hear any kind of the updates. I know it's kind of out of the board's hands at the moment, but I'm still out here uh, supporting Mount Blue Sky. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you. And I just want to clarify that's Tim Swales, correct? Yes, sorry. Yeah, Tim Swales. And I put that thing in the chat. That wasn't the other Tim. I know there's like three Tims on this call at the moment, but I'm just the general public Tim. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, JD, the floor is yours. Hey, I, I'm sorry, just bear with me while I navigate with this phone. The audio is off, so. Sure. Now, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, right on. Um, one thing I'd like to comment, if I can go back to when um, Eric had mentioned the idea of, or somebody had mentioned the idea of names why we came to this point one thing i'd like to mention is since we started this endeavor uh, this has really opened up a lot of <laughs> challenges so to speak so if you take a look at the name um, um dr martin luther king they're saying now that they want to change his name they want to change the names because those are his history with sexual Anyway, I don't want to get into all that. So anyway, that's one thing that I was going to say is I, for one, always stressed about staying away from names because I think there's really nobody that's really going to be perfect. And because we've opened this up, I think we're going to be inviting a lot more issues that it's not necessary. So I think I just want to clarify that, that this is part of the issue, the issues that we're, come, that we're having to contend with when naming places from out of, you know, from naming places of individuals. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that, and I may have misunderstood this, so I do apologize, but when we're talking about, you know, and I don't know if I heard it right, but Dead Mexican Gulch, and it was mentioned that these sites become part of the area that's there. It's still derogatory, even though it may be a feature that's in that area and it's understood. So I'd like to present, what would people think if that was actually called like 
Dead Dutchman's Gulch or something of that nature. So I think that's one thing we have to be very cautious of when we say, oh, that has become part of the feature. And we also have to understand, I've been called Mexican all my life. I don't know, no SS, you know, I'm from this country. You know, I was born here. Told me familia están aquí también. You know, we're from here. We're not Mexican. So you're actually taking, we don't know the true history of what that individual was or what it is. And so just that whole sentiment was very bad. And I think we need to be very aware of this as we're going forward. And remember, I'm saying this all out of deep respect for this for this uh, process that we're doing here. So this is muy importante. You know, this is very important for us. It really is. So anyway, I just wanted to say that, and I really mean it in the best of um, in the best way, but I think we have to be cautious and just go forward. Otra vez. Not just other, and we'll talk to you guys later, okay? Thank you, Mr. Roybo. I, I always appreciate your input, and thank you for your consistent attendance to these meetings. And I think, Commissioner Chimino, I think your comment was um, meant regarding the proposed name of Jose Bellarde. Is that correct? Yeah, um, you know, um, uh, I am an elected official, and so public comments, uh, the general practice is not to respond to public comments, but I'm happy to do so now. So yes, I apologize if I uh, characterize the the history of this name for so many decades as like, it's okay. It's okay that we called it that. I I, I did not mean to imply that. I could see how the, that was interpreted. So what I, what I did try to say is that if, if the locals have referred to this feature because of an individual who may have been struck by lightning and, and was found deceased, that maybe we 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 change the name to the actual individual that, that we think it was and yeah we're keeping that kind of tradition but not we're not okay with the old term I'm, I'm sorry to imply that so thanks for for you know pointing out that i may have uh voiced a, a an, an idea that that was offensive or that may have been comfortable with the prior offenses and now it's just the way it is i i didn't mean to imply that but but I, so I appreciate the public's comment on that one. Thanks, Commissioner, for that clarification. And thank you, Mr. Roybal, again, for, for raising that issue. Can I wow. say something? I'm sorry? Can I say something real quick? Sure, absolutely. Mr. Gimino, this is truly respectful, and I really appreciate that. And that's why I brought it up, because that's why we're here, is to have these tough conversations, you know? And that's where I think this is where the respect comes into play is where we can actually talk to each other like this, knowing that we don't mean any harm. And that's why I said if I misunderstood because sometimes, you know, you tend to get a little bit sensitive. And then just so you know, my grandfather, you know, he was actually a, a sheep herder. And when they were talking about how he killed these people, all of a sudden I started realizing some of the stories I've heard from him, you know. And so some of these things are really there. I mean, these are real people that have died from this individual if he killed them, you know. So you have, we have to understand as we're having these conversations, there is truly history that's not ancient history. It's right here. And so, Mr. Camino is honest. I really respect that. And I respect you being here. And I didn't mean any disrespect when I said it, but I love these conversations. And when you guys invite me here, I really feel welcome. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that, Mr. Roybal. And yes, it's it's great that we are able to have these conversations. I appreciate you all. Um, are there any further comments? Okay, as, as there are no further public comments, then um, our next agenda item is just the announcement of our next meeting. And I don't know when that is. So <laughs> Johnny, do, do you wanna let us know when our next meeting I'm is? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I, I wasn't paying attention. I was, I was trying to match Mr. Roybal's uh, heart emoji there. Um, uh, yeah, we, we could talk about it next time. We in the April um, in the April description of the meeting, we talked about discussing um, a board retreat at this meeting, which which didn't happen, and that's okay. So perhaps we could try to discuss um, a board retreat at our next meeting, and maybe we don't have the budget, maybe we don't have the bandwidth, but I'd like to have the conversation if that's okay. Uh, perhaps at the next meeting, about, about a future retreat at some at some future time. Sure, we can we can discuss that at our next meeting. Great, thank you for bringing that up. 
Yeah, um, thanks, Commissioner. I'll take the I'll I'll, I'll eat that one. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a busy couple months here, but uh, we uh, I, I still think it'd be kind of good to get us all together if possible. So um, we'll try and explore some way to to sort of do something like that and. Um, let, let's set the meeting and then let's have a retreat slash social time, you know, get to know on each other, spend some time together, kind of separate from that. So why don't, um, we'll uh, put our heads together. Um, I'll put my head together with uh, Miss Abed here. And um, uh, if uh, Grand County is an option, maybe we'll reach out to you about finding the uh, location and uh, buying the first round. <laughs> Grand Junction is also always happy to host. <laughs> we we'll compete go. for those lodging tax dollars. <laughs> Great. Um, so Johnny, help me out here. I think before, and I, I'm tempted to try and go back to our regular third Thursdays of each other month, which would put us at August 17th. Am I, am I remembering correctly when we were doing that? Yes, that is correct. The fourth Thursday or every other. Yes. So when we tried this last month, it didn't work so well, but I'm wondering right. if uh, we have any challenges with August 17th, 6 to 8 p.m. I, I probably won't be able to attend that one. Um, um, I got I got an appointment with my wife, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that, that, uh, we we will honor uh, that. What about um, the tenth Thursday, six to eight? Mr. Uh, Mr. Tara, I'm not available for that one. Uh, but if that's the date that works, I can talk to my colleagues about getting alternate counsel. If you don't mind, if uh looks like we might have some concerns. I was just gonna say I'm not available on that date. There we go. I'll be on work <laughs> travel, sorry. <laughs> um I'm I also can't... double booked that uh, that that night, uh Doctor. Director. I have a correction, Tim. If we could go back to um the August 17th, your original suggestion. Um, I do have travel, but I, I'm available that evening. I'm available August 17th. I, I am. I could get on if, Zoom. If it, I don't want to take away if it's travel with vacation with uh, the, the wife or family. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. I do it all the time. And um, what I, the actual event we're doing is a Friday night event. So we got travel. The event's Friday. I'll get on Zoom on Thursday. And that's fine with me. Okay, uh, if uh, that works, um, and you've been so consistent joining these meetings, if you got to take a meeting off, uh, Commissioner, um, by all means. But uh, any other concerns with uh, the 17th? Okay. We'll put that down August 17th at 6 p.m. And uh, in the meantime, then, uh, Johnny, if you can set up some time uh, for us to also chat about a little retreat and uh, see what we could uh, pull together, that'd be great. Yes, absolutely. Cool. All right. So with that, then, we're ready to adjourn our meeting. Um, do we have a Madam Chair? Yes. One Just... more thing, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. um, in the chat here uh, for our new members, uh, I'm putting in the link to the uh, Colorado Geographic Naming Advisory Board website that's hosted on the DNR's uh, webpage. Um, within there, you'll see a uh, meeting information and then there's previous meeting drop downs. There's always video if you ever want to go back and look at any of the uh, previous meetings or anything uh, like that. Um, as well as some additional information. Uh, I think we've got our bylaws up there. Uh, we might have had the draft uh, uh, guidance document. We'll put that, put up the uh, approved uh, document and such. And so uh, it's a matter of reference for if you ever bump into individuals that are interested also in uh, uh, renaming uh, places. And then for those that weren't able to join us last week, the, I would um, uh, the meeting video uh, will get up. Get will uh, that's actually up there. That's got some information, um, some presentations by Jenny Runyon on the USBGN and some more kind of 
deep dive in sort of our processes uh, for uh, this board. So thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you. And Ms. Runyon, you have your hand up. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize, I probably should have uh, raised my hand during public comment, it just suddenly occurred to me uh, looking at the dates. Um, if I might be permitted to put in another plug for the Council of Geographic Names Authorities, the conference coming up in the middle of September. Uh, this is an opportunity for, for you and all your counterparts and other state names authorities to get together once a year and to not only, uh, you know, obviously meet each other, um, to uh, meet the US BGN members. Um, I understand we'll have a pretty good turnout again. Uh, we were thrilled to have Tim and Johnny there with us at the conference last September in Maryland. Uh, this one will be at just about the same time, middle of September in Portland, Oregon. Um, there's a link um, on the Council of Geographic Names Authorities uh, website, uh, Cogna. Um, in case you're wondering, there's um, not a dedicated conference hotel. It's sort of you're on your own to find accommodations. Um, the opening and closing sessions will be at the Oregon Historical Society. Um, and then the sessions themselves will be held at a, um, uh, a Native, um, I forget what they call it exactly. It's, a, it's a, a Native American community center also in, in downtown Portland. So it's coming up fast. It's only about three months away. It's hard to believe. Um, so if any of you possibly have any time or money in your budget to attend and meet with fellow uh, geographic names uh, geeks, <laughs> that's the place to be. And I'm hoping Tim and Johnny will agree it was definitely a worthwhile occasion last year. Um, I think we all we always learn so much and I've been to many of these conferences and yet every year I learn something new. So uh, especially for, for, the, for the, the new members of this board okay. that might not be familiar with this COGNA is the acronym for the conference. I highly uh, recommend it. Um, and for what it's worth, you should be receiving fairly soon, I think from Christine Johnson, who is the um, executive secretary of COGNA, uh, two things, a request for um, a state report I presume the chair would be responsible for putting that together, um, a report on what you've done in the past year, and that's read aloud at the conference, and also um, a request for what we call state federal roundtable topics, uh, questions, concerns, things you'd like to share with your counterparts, questions to ask about what do we do in a case like this. Um, so um, again, just to, if I might, uh, a shameless plug for the conference, I, I know it's hard when this is not your full time job. Uh, like it is mine, it's hard to justify the, that kind of travel. But if you can come to Portland in September, we'd absolutely love to see any and all of you. So thank you again. I appreciate the chance to speak. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Ms. Rinian. That sounds like a, a great time. Thank you. It is. And thank you. Commissioner Chimino, your hand is up. You said middle of September. Do you have exact dates, ma'am? Um, yeah, that, that middle week. I want to say it's um, the 12th oh, okay. through the 16th. Oh, the 16th. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. So we typically we travel in on Tuesday, that would be the 12th, and that's sort of a meet and greet, and then there's a, an evening reception, and the meet of the conference is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then on the Saturday, the 16th, there will be a, a bus tour, where they take you around a lot of interesting place names in the area, so in this case, I think they'll be going up the Columbia River, I think that's what I've heard, so uh, if you can add an extra day, highly recommend it. Thank you, Ms. Runyon. And Madam Chair, my second question is, um, how is our budget for something like that? I, I don't know what the budget <laughs> situation on this board. I'll defer to, to Director Mock. Uh, what budget? <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, we don't have a budget for the naming advisory board. We had to kind of do this all in-house. Um, I, I think that, you know, let's do it this way. Um, it is the 12th, the 16th, uh, the reception, I think is the, the evening of the 12th. And then um, it uh, continues on in terms of the conference, uh, the actual um, tour uh, is on, I think the uh, Saturday, the 16th this year. So Correct. it's kind of a long week. Um, if anybody is interested, uh, please send an email to Johnny and um, we'll punch some numbers and see what we've got available here at DNR. And um, we might have to kind of uh, 
come up with uh, some way to identify, you know, who goes or doesn't if we're kind of limited or we get too many that we can't necessarily accommodate and sort of make this a rotation. And then with that, uh, the 2026 conference, 20, no, 2025 conference will be here in Colorado. Uh, <laughs> so we will be hosting men um, and probably next year about this time we'll begin kind of the the the, the nitty-gritty planning uh for that that conference in in pool and such thank you and next uh, year we'll be in uh, missouri i believe it's in columbia missouri um i've not heard the dates so although i think somebody the same time again i think again mid-september so you all you can drive from denver to missouri can't you isn't it in a day <laughs> it's a long drive it's a long drive yeah. Thank you. A not, Washington yeah, DC person says that. <laughs> yeah, I know, no. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, certainly, yes, if Colorado is, in fact, you're hosting in a couple of years, it's definitely uh, worthwhile to attend one before you host it so you get an idea what you've signed yourself up for. <laughs> Poor Tim and Johnny got sort of um, sold into, sure, Colorado, we can do it. Sure. sure. Oh, and the following year, I think it's going to be Utah. So we're trying to keep it out west. We're doing our best. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Sounds great. Thank um, you. Before, oh, go ahead. Oh, before we adjourn today, I just want to say thank you to Director Mock and to Ms. Abad for, for their help with, with learning the ropes and for guiding us for two years um, and setting a very high bar. So, and thank you all for your patience as I learn the ropes. Um, so with that, uh, I'll take a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Those who say aye, if you agree. Aye. 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 All right. See everyone. Aye. See everyone soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rival. Thank you, Rebel.